Welcome, dear learner of senior secondary level of painting course. Now we are going to demonstrate about the nature study. You know the meaning of nature that is in front of you always. You appreciate a hill, a cornfield, trees, sea beach, mountain and everything. And from the long, long time, human being is trying to capture all these beauties and make it permanent. In those days, there is no camera, so there is no photographs to make it permanent. It was only the artist who could capture the beauty of nature in different way and different manner. Till in this age, artists are the creative people want to capture that beauty in different manners and different ways. One of these ways are paintings. You watch nature, you love it. It remains your memory for a long time. And when you see it, you look at it, and you try to remember this, what you want? A replica of that particular scene that you have enjoyed long time back. For nature study, you have to watch nature very carefully and make a lot of sketches. Making sketches is again very important in landscape painting or nature study. You can study a flower, you can study a tree, you can study mountain, even you can study the sky, which is changing every time of different colors of clouds and also the sunlight. But it is not always to go out to the spot to paint a landscape or study nature. We always find some alternative ways. And one of the best ways for that to use a photograph, which you capture long time back or you have seen somewhere in the magazine or the newspaper that impressed you so much. So keep that in front of you and try to paint from that photograph in color, in pencil, on your paper. I would encourage you to copy any work of landscape for other artists. Don't try to copy it. Instead, you take a photograph and try to copy the photograph rather than the work of a artist. The painter has all her equipment around her. The pencils are there, different kind of pencils, harder to soft. Then the colors in the other side, the bowl of water, brushes, the uh, palette in the form of an eye tray, and most important thing that she has a photograph on the drawing board that is clipped in one side. She is very carefully and intensely watching the photograph which she likes very much. It's a beach scene and the photograph is taken from a long distance but for her some parts are not necessary. So what she is doing she is focusing on some important part which she likes most and accordingly she is making a layout. You watch how she is doing the layout. In landscape few things are very important which we must know. First thing is perspective. P perspective could be shown in two ways. One perspective we call is linear perspective. Through lines we can show the things in the distance and things in the foreground. As our eyes alignment, the focus is generally very, very clear in the foreground. So we see things clear when it is very close to us. As it moves farther and farther, it becomes hazier and the lines also be started fading. So here we see 
that she is trying to have the depth in the space which is defined by perspective. She has taken some part and the focus is on the building of the shacks on the beach with some uh, ritual flags flying uh, which is uh, put on the sand of the beach and the distance we see a hill and by the side of the hill a long strip of sea and that is it again accompanied by a white beach. So the layout is actually we see it's a very very accurate and distinct to make the landscape very beautiful and watchable. And after this layout she will move to next to enlarge that in a uh, uh, space which is the final one. Now she will start transferring the layout in the main sheet which will be colored by her. She is starting with the foreground the sands and some bushes in the foreground and that is going up on the top of the beach The shacks are very primitive in nature. It is built with the help of some bamboo and thatched by some kind of vegetation. Now she is defining the horizon which is parallel always horizon should be always parallel with the outline of the sheet. You remember horizon never diagonal or anything else the sea level always always parallel but the beach is here little diagonal in nature and it is done particularly to bring the depth in the space. Beyond the beach there is a hill that we can see and the photograph you can see the redness of the hill. The most of the soil in this area are reddish in nature and that gives a beauty in contrasting the greenery of vegetation and the ocean blue. Remember both sky color and the sea color keep on changing time to time. You know this is only because of the sunlight. Sunlight also keeps on changing from the morning to dusk and the midday it is almost absolutely blue if there is no cloud. On cloudy days it is different but when the photograph was taken the sky was very clear. So sunlight is falling very clearly on everything from the heart, the trees, the bushes and the ritual flag that is flattering 
in the air. You have to be very careful when you are doing a landscape. Landscape could be of different kind. When you just making a landscape from rural side or beach or mountain, all these things we generally call it landscape. But when you do it inside the city, the urban areas, that is also a kind of landscape, but we call it cityscape. And when it is seen of the beach and sea, we call it seascape. But generally we term everything in one nomenclature that is landscape. Landscapes could be done in different medium. Most popular medium of landscaping in the 90s and the 20s was watercolor, mainly a British type of watercolor. This kind of landscape are done on handmade paper and British artists, they use a very transparent form of watercolor without any white in it. Because these painters wanted to use the whiteness of the paper which could be seen through the colors. So in watercolor of this type, the whole thing is very transparent in nature. But one thing, when you are making a landscape with watercolor, you must remember there is no chance to overcome an error. If you do a mistake or not proper use of color, the whole thing becomes very hard. And this hardness spoil the beauty of the landscape. Second option is poster color or tempera color, which is mixed with white. These colors are opaque and you can use them almost like oil on paper. So you can repaint so many times on the surface and had the preference for doing it in the initial stage. Third option and the best option is oil or acrylic. Oil color has its advantages and also disadvantages. Since oil is the main ingredient or what we call the mixture of the color. Oil has a tendency to soak on the back side of the canvas unless it is very good quality of canvas. So if you want to use oil, always go for very good quality of canvas. Otherwise, the painting will lose its charm. Second difficulty is oil takes long time to dry. So if you want to overpaint 
on a particular area, you have to wait at least four, five hours sometime or sometime it could be one or two days. So in these days, most painters, they prefer acrylic. Acrylic is a new medium of our time, which dries very fast, but ultimate effect of some time almost like oil, but it doesn't have the fluidity of oil color. In any case, acrylic is a very good substitute for oil color. For oil color, you need turpentine and also linseed oil. The double purified linseed oil is the best option to dilute the colors on the palette and sometimes to make it thinner you can use a turpentine oil also. In fact, linseed oil takes long to dry. So when it is added with the turpentine, the drying process becomes faster. On the other hand, acrylic, you can dilute or thin by water also, oil also. And you can use any kind of canvas. So it's a cheaper medium than oil and you can finish your work almost in four to five hours on the spot. But fastest process is British type of watercolor. Now our painter will be using poster color. But she will use in the mixed type. In some part thin watercolor like and some part it is thick and opaque type of poster color. So we can call it a kind of mixed medium in which with the same color she can use two processes at a time. Uh, she will start first with the sky. She will take white and ultramarine in two places and use a very thick brush and she will load the brush with lot of colors and spread over the sky. You watch the photograph that there is very light cloud on the sky and this effect you can bring first using a flat color and then little white patches here and there. When you are using such effect, remember, try to use the color as fast as possible to retain the softness of the color. When the color dries, it becomes hard in effect, especially when you are painting the cloud, you use the soft surface of the other color to get the white softness of the cloud itself. The technique is little different from which we have already seen in the case of still life painting. The object in the still life painting was very hard in nature, like the ceramic or the book. 
but here the nature is much softer than man-made objects. To get the softness, we'll need a little bit of water. You can see how beautifully the effect of cloud is coming with the handle of the brush. Notice the sky is lighter than the color of the sea. She is using simultaneously both the colors, the blue and also white. And the effect of the sky and cloud is spontaneous. It is not always predetermined. You just get the total effect of the sky. You are not you are counting each bunch of clouds. While you are using ultramarine for the sky, you can use Prussian blue for the sea. Or you can use cobalt blue for the sky and ultramarine for the sea. So always keep the difference between the two shades, that of sky and the sea. Otherwise, both will be mixed up. The sky is done. Now she will do the sea. Since the slice of the sea is very narrow, she requires a smaller brush. She has taken brush number four. Prussian blue is mixed with little bit of white and it has produced a wonderful bright color of the sea. So you can easily distinguish between the sky and the sea in the horizon. So you must have noticed one thing that it is always better to start from the top of the composition. Now she will move to the heel part in the distance. To get this color it is better you take yellow ochre and little red and then you mix with red and add little bit of white to make it a little dull as it is in the distance. I think you need little more red to add, very little. Now the distance hill will be colored with small patches of green on it. When you are doing this kind of work, you cannot get exact shade of the nature in ready-made F-level colors in the market. The best way you prepare your own color to match it with the nature. As in this case we have seen the accurate color of the hill in distance is not available. So, mixing red, yellow ochre and white help you to get that shade. In the process of painting, you learn how to mix color and how to get exact shades of the object of nature. Nature is full of colors. Nature has different shade of one color. There are at least 50 shades of green and those are not available 
in the market ready made you prepare your own color and try to get the exact shade that you see in nature constant study and practice you will learn how to mix it and how to get it exactly this is share your experience that make you a good artist now you can color the sandy beach with this greenish touch here and there so the painter will take different shades of green either she will make or take directly from the bottle you notice in the picture the different kind of shades of green spread all over the beach with little patch of sand here and there actually this green part on the beach are bushes and grasses that grow sometime and again they vanish so the color of the beach also are changing every time according to the season so to get the different shade you use dark color and then use chrome yellow or lemon yellow here and there to get the exact character of the green patches it should not be monotonous in nature bring the variation in the coloring to beautify your work and more attractive a notice how did differently now she is using the brushing while she was brushing the sky is long strokes but now is small strokes that she is using almost like stripling in case of drawing notice how different shades are coming out and beautifying the landscape in any painting brushing is very important it brings the characteristics of the object especially for smooth surface you can use long brushing stroke on the contrary for rough surfaces stripling or small strokes are always preferable watch closely the use of brushing of green chrome yellow lemon yellow and yellow ochre each stripling of different color is bringing the characteristics of the landscape you always remember you cannot really capture the glory of nature in any way our skill our vision and our concept along with our perception is very limited we cannot go beyond that but we try our utmost to come close to nature to capture the nature sometime you are successful sometime you are not but don't be disheartened the main purpose of a painting is to please your aesthetic sense so if it is not accurate to nature or reality it doesn't matter what matters that how much it is pleasing you how much aesthetic pleasure you are getting out of it 
and for reason you have all the artist freedom to change the composition the color or even the texture of the object sometime the structure of the composition in this landscape is basically horizontal in nature but if you want to balance this monotonous horizontality you can always add some structure that is vertical uh, you stretch the green on the right side little more then again use very light sap green on the surface that means you add chrome yellow with the green to get the right color after this the painter will use a long brush strokes horizontally for the soft green of the surface uh, for this it is better to use brush number 10 use both the colors at a time along brush strokes mm, this is the color you need add little more yellow you give some strokes there now is taking shape and the character of the bushes you give some strokes there uh, not don't use smooth color you use little you locker with that now give some strong strokes or like the sky you can use the strokes on the sand the foreground is almost done with the bushes now you can see how the sacks or the building beyond the bushes are coming out and then you use their chrome yellow since the chrome yellow is a bright color so it will be very clear it will come out of the space soft you use color that's not much that's enough and give a flat color here the white portion with 12 number brush just patches like this to get the character of the foreground and the sand you can use brush strokes with a different tone of yellow ochre yellow and likely a little bit of green here and there just touches nothing much yes and the lighter tone of same color near the c now when you use the strokes on the top and on the bottom of the horizontality is balanced by the patches of green in the middle and that become the perfect composition of the landscape this tone you keep and make pure yellow at the end or any other c so learn to notice few things the painter has used very limited color not a great range of colors green yellow ochre chrome yellow red and two types of blue prussian blue and ultramarine blue with this only limited color she could bring the essence 
of the natural beauty of the sea beach. The composition is very simple. Not much detail have been done. In spite of that, you can catch and breathe the beauty of seashore. Whenever you are painting a landscape, time to time you keep it in a distance and try to visualize that how much depth you could have brought in this particular work. So landscapes are generally to be seen from distance. Only then you can get the vista of the composition and as well as the depth of the painting. You just keep it there and watch it. Dear learner, so you have learned few things about landscape painting. The most important thing that you have learned that you should not go for too much of details. Much detail doesn't actually beautify a painting more. So remain to the basic characteristics, use very simple color and also take care of the perspective and use of the light and shade in a landscape painting. So I hope you are much benefited from this demonstration and we'll continue this process and you also keep on doing a lot of landscape and sketches and later use those sketches in your landscape painting. Thank you.